Okay, cowboys and girls, this is how you make a redneck roller coaster. The first thing that's very important is you can only use a Cavalier, a Sunbird, a Grand Am, or a similar GM car because of how the steering mechanism works. The steering mechanism is mounted on the firewall, which gives us access for our steering shaft, which come, has to come over top of the transmission. I welded two pipes just to the bumper by cutting the plastic out of the way. Made a homemade plate, insane got to have a beer holder of course. Got to have a foot rest for your gas pedal. There's the gas pedal, there's the foot rest. Got to have a brake pedal. Got to have some tunes. There's my radio. And speakers. You got to have a way to change how the steering reverses when the steering shafts go backwards. There's two universal joints that just found on common steering shafts in ordinary cars. But these two gears, they come out of a Kenmore or Whirlpool washing machine transmission. They're the reversing gears. This vehicle has power brakes. That big round thing is the power brake booster. The little tubes are the power brake fluid lines for the hydraulic brakes. The seat is a van seat out of a 19 early 80s or 70s Ford van. The steering column came from a mid 80s Omni. The gear shifter came out of this car, the 91 Cavalier. Of course, you got to have an antenna for your radio. Right now, the horns and moose uh, skull are not mounted because we did such big endos they broke and we hit the ground, but I can easily replace those. I've got some more of them. Notice the brake cylinder, brake fluid reservoir, headlight switch, ignition, everything works up here. I use the ordinary standard cable that came with the car to make a shifter cable. I had to add a rod to extend it. Down at the bottom I added a dryer roller to make a turning point for the throttle cable. I made a little linkage here to make the moving parts for the gear shifter linkage. Inside the car we have nothing. No gas pedal, no brake pedal, just a speedometer. It actually still works. To get on the redneck roller coaster I used the handle off of a cart, cut the bottom off, made a good ladder. I bought some wire mesh I made a walkway, or a body recovery pad, whatever you want to call it, to get up to the seat. Now that we're on top, we can walk up the runway, get into the driver's seat. Notice, notice copious quantities of beer holders, one there, and of course one for the driver. Gear shifter, antenna, omni steering wheel, factory radio, and mouse crossing our path. Cool. My car's been sitting outside in the rain for six years now, so my Ford van seat is well weathered, but very comfy. Under the hood, it took about a, oh, 10 or 12 wires, which I sneakily ran up inside the pole to wire this baby. There's our brake lines. Everything runs under here. I just welded the new brake lines to the old brake lines. The steering shaft is just a piece of one inch pipe that runs down to an ordinary steering universal joint that comes from any car. The steering rack is a firewall mounted type that only comes on these kind of GM cars. So I rotated it 90 degrees so that it sticks away from the hole that's in the firewall and points this direction. I had to twist the power steering lines a little bit to do this. The next thing I did was I took off the struts of this car and I took off the springs and inside of the big springs that's on this car I put smaller Honda Accord springs and that gave it the extra front end height to keep the car riding at a level height. So when you put the brakes on your oil pan and your nose doesn't dig too hard into the ground and cause damage and the car will ride level. I had to remove the heater box and heater fan assembly but who cares no one ever rides in the car. The air conditioning is great up here.
I had to make a slight adjustment to the tie rod ends, which amount to this uh, rack, which you can see. And overall, in the six years since January of 2000 that I made this car, the, the part that I made has been trouble free. It sits outside every year, summer and winter, it gets buried in snow, because we're up in Canada. But the only problems with the car has been worn out brakes, and a problem with the computer, and leaky gas lines, nothing to do with anything but Chevrolet's fault. So, enjoy your new ride, and die smiling. Ha ha.